Help me ducks, it's Simon here. Welcome back to the Hermit's Cave. I hope everybody's doing okay. I'm just gonna light a, a candle. Um, it's the start of the week, and as you'll see, I've taken a delivery today, which I'm still wrapping presents and things, that's why stuff is everywhere. Um which I'm thrilled to receive. It's arrived a couple of days early, a few days early. I was told it was coming on the 8th. Um, and yeah, as you can see, it's Lotaro Arthurian. Um, and the illustrations of this deck is Arnatorian, who, as you will know, if you've uh, watched my channel, is an artist that I absolutely love. I've had the pleasure of having Arna on my channel. Um, I did a, an interview with her. If I remember, I'll link it below. Um, but she's one of the creators, she's the creator, sorry, of one of my favorite Oracle decks, which is Oracle of Echoes. She's working on a Tarot of Echoes. She had to put it on hold actually to complete uh, this project. because I think this had uh, kind of a, a, a deadline for completion, uh, but she's back working on that in earnest now. Um, this is a French copy. I don't know if there's any plans for it to ever be released uh, as an English version, but I'm okay with French titles in the main um, because I've had French um, tarot decks in the past, particularly Marseille uh, type decks. So um, I think I'd be okay with it. Now on the back, obviously, um, it's in French, but I've taken a photo and I've translated it so that I can read what it says on the back to you. Um, the only walkthrough I've seen is Chris Elemental Cartomancy, and I stopped myself halfway through because um, I, I wanted the ele element of surprise as well. So I watched him do the Major Arcana and then I came off and thought, no, I'll wait for mine to arrive. Um, and I was shocked at first because he held this little box in his hand. I thought, oh my gosh, it's tiny. Uh, but then realised it's a box within a box. Anyway, on the back it says, um, Discover the wisdom and teachings of the mythical King Arthur. And then it says, The Arthurian legend, magnificent and alive like the water of streams, adapts to eras and storytellers of all times. Thanks to the 78 divinatory blades, marked by a courtism from the end of the 19th century, travel to the misty kingdom of Avalon and enter a subtle world of mysteries and surprises to meet your true being. And, you know, anything to do with Avalon, um, Glastonbury, all that kind of stuff, and King Arthur, I'm, I'm there. Gently, you'll be able to carry out work of personal knowledge and healing of your soul. The explanatory book also offers you numerous drawings, detailed guidance, as well as journaling exercises in order to carry out deep introspection work. This tarot will become a precious tool to reconnect you with the marvellous and take charge of your destiny. And I think it's really cool to be able to do like a Google Translate um, because this does come with a book. Um, but obviously the book is also going to be in French. Um, but, you know, if you wanted to, you could take a photograph of the particular card, uh, the particular page relating to the card and drop it into uh, Google Translate and you, you've got a translation. So we live in a modern modern era now don't we where uh slowly but surely barriers are are being uh reduced so beautiful design we've got the ace of cups here as the front uh cover design for the box it's a nice matte finish it has uh, a magnetic closure closure the the deck uh and the, particularly the um the book is by claire duval and as it says here, illustrations is by Arnatorian. And uh, like I said, I, I love her oracle, but she's got other other works out. Uh, Tarot of the Abyss is probably one of her most uh, popular ones. Okay, so I'll just give you a demonstration. So we want to see 
what uh, this text is referring to. So I'll just take a photo of that. And then I just go to Google Translate. Um, it's saying images, where are we? Uh, images, browse, photo library, drop it in, done. Uh, and in it goes. Okay, and then it's translating that. Okay, so what that says is enter a subtle world full of mysteries and surprises to meet your deep being. The one who has always been linked to the sacred, magic and the unspeakable. Isn't that beautiful? Enter a subtle world full of mysteries and surprises to meet your deep being. The one who's always been linked to sacred, to the sacred, magic and the unspeakable. So, um, so that's nice. And then look, this is a really chunky book. As I say, it's going to be in French, but you can quickly sort that out. Um, I love that we get a full colour uh, rendition of the cards. Um, and it looks like there's a lot of information that you're getting. You're getting your kind of uh, keywords or key phrases. There's your, key, your correspondence. But then you've got symbols, signification, and then your divinatory meanings. And you've also got some journaling prompts in there. Uh, I mean, oh, look at that for a strength card. I saw that uh, on um, Chris's walkthrough yesterday, and I was like, that is such a gorgeous strength card. So beautiful, beautiful book. I hope they release it in English, um, just for ease. Um, and I also believe that Cheryl over at Oneness Emporium is also going to uh, be getting a few copies of this. So, for ease of storage, if you wanted, this the bo the outer box is this size uh, to, you know, accommodate this chunky, chunky book here, which is 373 pages. Beautiful as well. I like the gold stamping which is on the book on the boxes um it's really lovely but it comes with a nice um sturdy two-part box so if you just want to you know carry it around in a compact box you've got a box or if you short on storage space you can just store it uh, on your shelf in this box as well so nice sturdy two-part box as you can see and the gilded, I didn't know these were going to be uh, gold gilded, but look at that. It's a matte gold, um, really, really nice finish. Cardstock is gorgeous. It's nice matte cardstock, really nice. Love the backs. I think the backs are really, really cool. So, yeah. And in terms of a size comparison... Let's have a look. We will get a regular RWS. And it's more or less the same size. In fact, I think it's just tiny little bit wider. Um, but I'm splitting hairs there, but perhaps a little, little bit wider. But general uh, kind of MPC US games um, size cards. Uh, this is the inside. So, yeah, I really like that. I like the packaging. I think it's fantastic for a mass market deck. I mean, mass market decks now, the quality of them um, are becoming just as good as independent uh, decks. All right, so I'm going to bring the camera down and we'll take a look at this deck together. Okay, so hopefully there's enough light uh, there. Um, I've just, I just wanted to get an idea because it, if it was just Le Fou, then I would know that that's the fool. But then it says De Boy, I think it's how it's pronounced. And when you put that into Google Translate, it's the madman of the woods. Um, so, you know, there's a bit of translation issues there, but it's the fool um, of the woods. Um, and already it's instinctively uh, recognisable as the fabulous... Uh, artwork of Arnatorian, isn't it? It's if you've got bone, stone, and earth flesh, then you'll recognise the 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 art of this deck. 
or the Tower of the Abyss, which is a black and white uh, sketch version. I'd have loved to see a colour version of that actually, but that's another thing. Um, so yeah, so it's gorgeous. I love this fall. I love that the fall is of an older generation as well. Um, yeah, because we're, the fall is often seen as the young, innocent, uh, kind of out for sense of adventure, full of uh, awe and wonder. And I think we can have that throughout all, all, all of our lives, you know. I think we should never kind of lose lose sight of of that. I'm, you know, in my early 50s now, but I, I feel very much like the fall sometimes. I love to go off on adventures. I love to explore. So I really like that this is depicted as an older, an older person here. I love these beautiful butterflies as well. Look how he's looking at them. It's almost like he's had them cooked in his hands and he's just freed them um, and then just enjoying their beauty as they flutter by. Flutter by, butterfly. <laughs> Why has it took me 50, 53 years to realise that? <laughs> um, here's our magician. And again, I, I love that we're not uh, sticking to traditional gender type. So we've got a female uh, magician here who's, um, you know, cooking something up. What's like doing spell work, craft work. Uh, with the potions and different herbs and flowers and yeah so it's wonderful isn't that a beautiful beautiful image oh my goodness just stunning isn't it our high priestess la grand priestess and you can see beautiful borderless cards as well with just the the title at the bottom but yeah, stunning. I wonder if the book tells you the characters from Arthurian uh, legend. Let's have a look. Okay, so I've just done a translation of, so where you get uh, the title in the book, this bit here tells you about um, the card and who's in the card. So for this one, it says, I am the water fairy, virgin among virgins. Let me guide you to the mysteries of the other world. Come and pass through the mists of Avalon. <laughs> so gorgeous. I just know that I'm going to love this deck. And I think, you know, you don't necessarily have to have knowledge of Arthurian legend. Um, because the artwork is just beautiful, you know, it's an empress, it's a high priestess. Um, and I'm a bit like that with the Llewellyn. I don't need to know about Welsh mythology to enjoy the Llewellyn deck. Then we have our emperor. We went flying past the, uh, the empress there, didn't we? So the empress and the emperor. And then we have the Hierophant here. Look at the etchings uh, in the in the wood of the table here. The beautiful lover's card. I'm wondering if that's perhaps King Arthur and Guinevere. I don't know if I'll be able to pick that up through uh, just looking at the uh, yes well it's definitely definitely Guinevere as you can see here um so the King Arthur and Guinevere so you would be able to pick certain uh, particular names up from uh, the book but as I say if you've got the time you can translate to love this chariot card the justice is is in key eight which is interesting um wouldn't have been my choice personally but that's because i'm an rws uh traditionalist <laughs> and i know traditionally justice was at eight <laughs> um love the hermit card i think the hermit card is beautiful And 
is the, the Wheel of Fortune. And look, the polar opposites of night and day to represent that. That's the circle of life as well, isn't it? The gorgeous strength card, which is key 11 in this deck. But just look how beautiful. It's got to be one of my favourite strength cards, I think. I love the faces side by side. You know, both looking in the same direction, working together at one. Ah, oh, beautiful. And then we have Lependu, which is our hanged man. Which is interesting that it's somebody on a boat. That is one that I'll have to uh, to read read about. And again, uh, I mean, I know the Isles of Avalon, you know, lots of travel. But again, somebody on a boat. It looks like there's somebody laying here uh, that has passed. And it's almost like the final journey through the mists of Avalon. How beautiful that is in the background. It's interesting. And then Temperance. I love this. Here for the Temperance, we've got almost like a red and a, uh, like a red flame, maybe. But certainly the balance here between the red and the blue. He looks like the hermit. The devil. Look at his antlers. Fantastic devil card. Tower card, we can see this building crumbling and decaying behind. We've got two dragons fighting here. <laughs> Star card is beautiful. And as I say, I saw Chris's walkthrough. The star, the moon, and the sun, the trio in this deck, are all beautiful. My, one of my favourite sets of star, moon, and sun. It's beautiful, bright star in the sky. And then look at this for the moon card. I love it. Absolutely love it. And I have seen it before. I think uh, Arna showed it before the deck was released. Um, but yeah, it's just perfect. The moon, of course, you know, has, uh, has power and force over the oceans. And then, in contrast, we have the beautiful blazing sun in the sky and these flowers rising towards it. Stunning. And then our judgment card. Oops. The world is this white book, isn't it gorgeous? I think we had this in uh, Enchanted Forest Tarot for the world card as well, very similar from memory. Okay, then we're in our, our minors. So I'll go a little bit faster through this. So we've got batons, which is our wands. I love this, how the British Isles uh, were was quite separate. I know now we've got England, Scotland, Ireland and Wales, but you know, before um, the modern era of rule from 1066 um, with William the Conqueror and the establishment of the royal royal monarchy, a monarchy again, I should say, you know, the, um, the country was split up into regions like Anglia, etc. And they all had ruling uh, kings and queens. Hence why, you know, there's a high possibility uh, that King Arthur, Guinevere, etc. were who they were and not just legend. Beautiful, such gorgeous artwork. Taking 
two together, they're sticking a little bit because of the gilding. Let's it. Six of wands. So even though um, strength and justice were switched out of the, in contrast to the RWS, lots of the images, you know, if you are familiar with RWS, won't, won't pose a problem. It's a beautiful picture. I've seen this before. Just in its breathing, this fire, almost like a dragon. Oh wow. In her tower. Look at this. So we're starting with our king. Oh, look at those together. Look at that. Uh, isn't that wonderful? Make sure it's in shot, Simon. Look at that, how they face each other. I didn't realize when I picked it up, I thought, oh, look how they're facing in opposite directions. Um, and then when I brought them together, it's perfect, isn't it? I wonder if all kings and queens in the deck are like this. Love this, look at that. Isn't that a beautiful image? Oh, so the page is the Damoiselle. What was the knight? Was the knight the Chevalier? This is what's on the cover of the box and book. Love the colours in the sky. Absolutely beautiful. Two of Cups, the three. I don't know why, but I thought they were on swings, but that must be the new um, Tower of Echoes that's coming out, because I can remember seeing a um, time-lapse video that Anna did. Look at that. So, so gorgeous. Oh. Love it. Colours are gorgeous, aren't they? Eight. Beautiful. What's that is holding? It's like a comb of some sort. I wonder if it's a lock of somebody's hair. in the cards. So let's see. Yes, they do. They're side by side as well. Hmm, maybe. Or is it that way? No. Yeah, more or less. But the, the land doesn't quite match up. But Cash is looking at him. <laughs> While he's drinking from the cup. Are you going to give some to me? I love how the, and I don't know if it's all the way through, but it was certainly in the batons as well, how the, uh, how affectionate the knights are towards their horses look. Just gorgeous. We're very used to seeing them, you know, kind of in their armor or charging ahead and, you know, but there's a real tenderness. And I think it's gorgeous. <laughs> Apologies for that. I got a new phone today, so <laughs> I'm recording this on my old one and still in the process. Oh, gosh. I'm still in the process of uh, 
setting up the old one, but people are, because I've sent my new number out, people are texting back saying thank you. <laughs> so it's going off every couple of minutes. So we've got the sword in the stone here. Look how there's a, a crown at the side as well. Um, yeah, so this is our Ace of Swords. <gasps> oh, wow, look at that. This is stunning. Oh, look at this. Such a beautiful deck. Uh, I cannot wait as well for Tower of the Echoes to pair it with my Oracle of the Echoes. It's going to get used to death, as is this in the meantime. It's such a beautiful deck and it's got so much uh, depth and emotion with these images. They're just so poignant. Ah, so they're play playing chess together here. Look at that. I think actually, and that's what I might need to have done in the other one, because if you put them dead side by side, it doesn't quite link up. But if you do that, it does, look. So there is, there is a bit of an overlap, so you just have to overlap it. That's really clever. I love how the kings and queens have been paired. And I love how the the uh, knights aren't necessarily charging ahead on their steeds. And then we have our coins. <laughs> love this. Yeah, we've got the juggling for the, the two. Look at these characters at the front. Entertaining the uh, the court. Love this. Very RWS. Four. Wow. I wanted to see how this would be depicted. Powerful. I love this scene. And the table set for a family gathering for the Ten of Coins. Look at the flames on the candles. So our king and queen here. Sitting side by side. Oh, yeah, they're, they're just perfect. Grooming. Grooming the horse. And our damoiselle of coins. What an incredible deck. Incredible. Um, yes, I would love for it to be available in English, but I am more than happy um, to have this French version. You know, there's not a single... Uh, title anything here that I can't uh, translate. Cardstock is phenomenal. It's a thick deck, uh, really lovely. Gives you that really nice feel. Absolutely beautiful. Thrilled, thrilled, thrilled with it. So that is a Lataro Athorian. Uh, by Claire Duval and artwork by our very own Arnatorian. Thanks for watching everybody.
and until next time, go in peace, namaste and blessed be. Thank mm -hmm. you.